Saints and Tasty Cakes podcast. I'm Bert Lepore. He's Samuel Monte Carlo. We're hanging here with Angry Mike D. And we talk about music, movies, and so much more. All right, mixtapes and tasty cakes M3 review. Uh well, I, I attended M3 last week and uh it's uh it's always a great time. Um but it's uh the days are very long and I, I'm like the t- I'm not the type of person that's gonna watch the entire festival, every every single band. I it's just impossible, you know. So so I usually get there but Friday, it's a short day. First band's on it like uh seven o'clock <clears throat> it was uh count 77 which is uh danny coker from uh counting cars he's got that tv show counting cars he like you know <laughs> hot ride old cars and stuff it's, it's pretty cool i like the show and he has his own band he has a club in vegas called vamped uh i think we got there for like the last song and which i really don't remember but um you know there wasn't that many people there for him um but these, you know, I saw it a good crowd. It basically just like your typical hard rock bar band. Uh, right. Second band was Lizzie Borden, who I did see, and it was really good. And uh, I'm not really a, like a huge Lizzie Borden fan. Um, a few songs I like, but it was very theatrical, man. And at, at that at that point, I had a pretty good buzz going on. Because oh. <laughs> uh, it's just like you know, I mean, it's I like I like to drink and party with with the, with this stuff. It's a whole environment. It's it's not. I don't go solely for the music. It's the, the it's the people, the people you're with. Yeah. It's I mean, I run into so many people there. It's just you know that to me makes it worth it. It's like the people is like number one. Hang the hang is like the people and the hang. It's all like the priority for me. The right. music is secondary. I've seen all these bands. Right. Uh, dozens of times. I mean, I can't even tell you how many times I've seen these bands. Well, the Lindsay Borden, you could actually see the whole things on YouTube. I actually, it's the only thing I watched so far because I didn't go. Really theatrical. But I watched yeah. it. It was great. It was really good. Yeah. Was, yeah. He's got this. He's, hmm. He has, he wears like this mask where like, it's like three, three faces. It's crazy. See his real face. And then these two other faces and it's all attached. And dude, it's so, it's like, I, I got a pretty good buzz at this point. We had, <laughs> I was like right up front, our seats were like third, fourth row. And I'm like, holy shit, this is kind of like freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, he was really good. I mean, uh, after him was, uh, for them, I should say, Lizzie Borden's a band, not a person, even though his name is, calls himself Lizzie Borden. Anyway, it's like Bon Jovi, you know, yeah. Bon Jovi is really, him the band it's the band it's a band, yeah. band. anyway uh after after lizzie board it's like monte carlo right it's right a, it's, yeah. a band. it's not a person <laughs> uh so that was doro and uh again honestly i'm not i'm not really a huge doro fan i i, it's not, I don't dislike doro i just haven't really gotten too much into uh, into her music and uh you know our buddy johnny d has been playing with her for 20 something years yeah it's really good seeing him and uh no and, warlock stuff is pretty good yeah yeah so <laughs> Doro's good, solid yeah it was solid. a good mix of good mix of all that stuff and you know the band is amazing and band really great sound of band uh after that was um kicks kicks played so they're like the the headliner i'm sorry i said five bands only four bands that night so after Doro was kicks and kicks is like you know the maryland hometown heroes like what were you know any other town they'd play in front of maybe between 500 and 1200 people you know in maryland they play in front of you know 8 to 10 12,000 people wow. it's amazing oh, so um i will say that last weekend the weekend of m3 in maryland <laughs> the weather was awful it was cold it was rainy uh it, it was like it was like winter weather i mean it was like maybe 40 something degrees it was rainy it was absolutely miserable <laughs> so um where am i getting at with this uh with this thing oh yeah so the uh so the turnout wasn't as as great as it usually is so uh it's like an amphitheater typical amphitheater so you, you have uh you know it's covered you know you have the seating there's maybe i don't know if i had to guess eight thousand seats nine thousand seats and then there's like a whole big lawn area where you know, if, that, if that's filled up, you could probably get another 5,000 out of it or whatever. The lawn was basically empty. Right. You know, but again, the weather was awful. 
I was ready to say we had a lot of rain that week. Yeah, it was yeah, it was terrible. So it, it definitely it definitely kept a lot of people away. So, but still, kick still played in front of maybe nine thousand people. It's a lot of oh. mud moshing going on. Yeah, <laughs> it was just. It was just really bad. So the, the, the next day, Saturday. Well, then uh, after Friday, after kicks, we go to the uh, to the hotel. It's called Lake House Hotel or something. And uh, we went there. And it's usually where everyone meets and hangs out. All the bands stay there. So it was like an after party there. And um, they kind of shuffled everyone in, out of the lobby where people usually hang because it's you get kind of loud. So they kind of shuffled us out of there and put us into like a ballroom where they had like a DJ <laughs> slash karaoke thing. And, um, you know, at that point I was basically pretty bombed. I was smashed to be quite honest with you. <clears throat> and a friend of mine, she does like, she's really big into karaoke. I met her on the monsters of rock cruise and every Friday night, her and her sister, they do, uh, like this Facebook live thing where they just do karaoke. It's pretty, it's pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 if I tell you guys that, it probably doesn't sound like okay, but it, it's just it's just fucking funny. They have a good time in doing it. So anyway, she was there doing the karaoke, and obviously, you know, I go up there and we do uh, we start out. We do close my eyes forever together. You know, I'm reading the lyrics from my phone and everything. <laughs> we got, I mean, there's like a lot, a lot of people there, so we did that, and then we go on to like "Rock Me" from Great White. We did, uh, holy god, man, we did. Tell me what you want from Zebra. We did. Um, we must have did like about a good eight to ten songs. Oh my god, you did a set. <laughs> yeah, we did. Did we anybody did like, else get a chance to karaoke over there? <laughs> not, not too many. It was basically me and her. And oh, then man. you know, you know, this person, you see them singing along. We would grab them. Yeah, That's you know, funny. and they would start singing. But it was a great time, uh, regardless. Saturday, I could barely speak. Uh, and I was severely hungover. So uh, uh, the first band Saturday, actually enough's enough played at noon. I saw them before. I, I was hungover. I couldn't get there at noon. I'm sorry. Lillian Axe was after that. Wasn't, I've never been a big Lillian Axe fan. Again, hungover. I'm not going to be there. Vane was next. I, I I dragged my ass. You had to make that one. I had to. I, I, I would be on my deathbed. I'm still going to be there for Vane. So, uh, <laughs> and I got, and uh, uh, Dan Parcells, I met him there. So me and him, we were right up front. I had, we had like third, fourth row the entire, the entire weekend. Nice. We had a good seat. So, but we saw Vane. They're just, God, man, they're just so fucking great. Amazing live band. They sound just like the record. Um, not perfect though, but definitely like, you know, you'd be satisfied watching. They played maybe 10 songs, maybe great, great set. Uh, after them were, were our local Philadelphia hometown heroes, Heaven's Edge. <clears throat> another great show. I mean, another great live band too. I mean, yeah. uh, they don't play out too often. Them, so Vane and then Heaven's Edge, that was like, you know, incredible one-two punch you know two bands you don't you hardly ever see live and they both sounded incredible they looked great on stage it was just everything that you would want uh after that <clears throat> tony harnell from tnt he played and i'm not i was never really a big tnt fan but i did watch a few songs from his set and he sounded amazing it's yeah. it, it, his voice is just incredible uh it's like pristine you know it's like what you remember from 30 years ago he still so hits those notes huh? dude it's incredible you know and he had a great band uh his band kind of looked like uh they kind of look like uh you know music university types you know yeah yeah <laughs> they, they, they didn't look like uh you know a, a tattooed you know stereotypical rock band okay, they kind of yeah. like guys who maybe play jazz on the side you know and this right. is just like a paid gig but they did they were they were great the you know, band sounded incredible and uh you know they played all the tnt songs that you would want to hear uh stephen pierce he was after tony harnell and i'm a huge rat fan i've probably seen rat probably more than any band i've, I've ever seen ever and uh stephen pierce he, look he's not like the most amazingly technical singer it's not his thing he's just like he just has like 
this coolness and his swagger about him and he's you don't you're not going to see him running across the stage and just <laughs> shit like that he's, he's he was never that guy you know he's always kind of like picture him like almost like a snake just kind of like slithering around from one end to the other being cool and everything and he had a great band and uh actually from what i heard is like two of the guys couldn't make the gig because they came down with uh, an illness or something so they had a couple of filling guys and they Band, you never, you would never know. The band sounded incredible. Uh, <clears throat> after that was Blue Oyster Cult, and uh, quite honestly, it was probably probably one of the most uh, boring sets I've ever seen. <laughs> really? Maybe, wow. maybe in my life. <laughs> How did they sound? Did they sound? They, yeah, they're, they're they sounding great at this point, right? <clears throat> yeah, they're up there. Sounding incredible. They sounded great. I, I, I I'm not going to say they sounded like shit because I said they were boring. They were boring. They were great, though. They, you know, they and they played the hits. It was just like, God, man, it was. It was like, you know, they're all just, they're just like standing there. All the songs are just kind of like they got to be like close to seventy now, dude. Oh, yeah. I think I think the the two guys, Buck Dharma and uh, is the other guitar player, original guy. I forget that they're in their seventies, pushing wow. eighty. Wow. They're on. Oh, they're wow. on the like maybe Buck Dharma might be like seventy six or something, but. And the other guys in the band are younger and younger, meaning like maybe 60. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they were great, man. And, you know, they played the songs that you wanted to hear from them, but it just was like, from like all this, like high, high octane, hard rock, yeah. you, you know, you go down to blue oyster called, it was just kind of, you know, and um, this kind of really didn't fit, you know? Yeah. Uh, they would have been better on more of like a 70s oriented thing. But N3, they're trying to get different bands and trying to get some variety in there. Every year, it's, you can't have the same bands right. to pull from every year. It's like, so I, I totally get why they're booked on there. And then uh, to close out the evening, Tom Kiefer, and he was just amazing. Uh, you know, he was, was just incredible. Great performer. I mean, the guy really puts everything into a show and pours his heart out. On, on the stage and you could just see it. He's not faking. They, they were they were great lives in the office. Cinderella was great. great Tom life. Kiefer is still he still got it and his band is is great. And they played the Cinderella hits and he played a good amount of stuff from the solo stuff because that's what he's he's promoting. promoting yeah. Yeah. I mean it, uh bands now they'll go out and tour for a new record and maybe they'll play one song on the album and it's a whole nostalgia thing. With him he's he re, he's really spent the better part of the past 10 years of really building his solo thing you know so you know so now he's headlining m3 instead of being like maybe in the middle somewhere upper middle and you know now he's headlining you know he's almost like to that cinderella level yeah you know uh, to his credit that's you know it was smart on his part to, to play it that way uh the last day sunday um i was pretty much non-existent it was mother's day and <laughs> i had to be the good son and i drive i drove all the way home from maryland to have uh mother's day dinner with my family and then i drove all the way back Ooh. because we had the room until monday and donna was there with, with her friends and everything so uh the drive wasn't really that bad it was it was like going down the shore pretty much but so i did the only band i got to see sunday was uh tesla and they were they sounded great. And oh, you I missed Skid Row. Skid Row was right before them. I missed ah. it. But uh all the reviews, everyone, everyone, even online, said that they were the band of the weekend. Nice. That the singer, the new guy they have, Eric Ronwell, has really injected new life into the band. You could definitely see from the videos I tell, you know, Snake is like kind of like smiling while the dude is like singing. You know, the guys are just fucking loving it. Yeah, yeah, and the guy is his his pitch like his pitch is like he perfect. sounds like Sebastian. His, his he doesn't he doesn't really sound like Sebastian. The, the thing is, he could do what he does all that stuff that Sebastian yeah. did. You know, he's the only guy that they've ever had, but he doesn't really tonally sound like him. But yeah, I mean, he's got that kind of he's got that thing going on. You know that 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 Seb Sebastian had, but the dude's a great front man. He's very likable. He's having a good time on stage. There's really not that much not to like it about him he's oh, young yeah. right he's like 35 yeah yeah the only negative i heard was you know some some idiot saying that uh you know he doesn't he, he doesn't fit because he doesn't have the long hair but it's fucking stupid 
yeah, at, at this point. I mean, yeah, really. It, 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 if that's what you're, you're, what you're worried about, you know, <laughs> what, what, can I, what can I tell you? But um, nothing bad to say about him, man. I, you know, if he plays with, uh, if they play like another gig within two hours, I'm I'm gonna go see them for sure. It's like they're just. You know, the, the live clips that I've seen and the whole set is on YouTube. I did see that, but I did see some clips and the guy is just like, it's great. Yeah. Clips but Tesla, I didn't see the entire set. I think I missed like the first three songs, but they were amazing too, man. And I was right up front and, uh, you know, Jeff Keith still sounds great. You know? Yeah. I heard their newest album. It, it was actually pretty good. It sounded like the mm -hmm. old stuff, you know? Yeah. I think that's what people want, you know? Yeah. You know, Absolutely. I think, uh, yeah, I think they're okay with uh, bands put on new albums as long as it stays true to, what to they their do. legacy. You know, yep. but uh, they played a lot of deep, a lot of deep tracks. Uh, I'm, like, I'm like some bands with the initials G and R. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty much it. You know, with the uh, with the review. You know, again, it was uh, you know it was a great weekend. I hope they go back to two days next year. Um, Three days is just a little bit too much. A little bit too much, man. You know, I'm not, you sound like you're suffering still. He was tired. I called him yeah, yesterday. Was, he was tired, dude. I was beat all week, man. We, we, we ain't as young anymore, man. We can't nah, man that, that takes you know? me. Uh, I gave Damien a call yesterday, and he must have or Monday, and he just must have just woke up. Usually, Dan's like, "Hey, what's going on?" Dan was like, "Yeah, what?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Hmm, he's not in a good mood." <laughs> yeah, well, we got we got home Monday, man. The first thing I did is I took a nap, and then Tuesday I went to work. And I think I came home and I took a nap again. I've been just like yeah, recovering ass all week. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. been rough. Yeah. So there you have but it. M3. It. <laughs> so uh, you'll be going next year. Maybe I'll be going next year, too, also. Uh, yeah, yeah. But you know, Dame says, you know, great weekend. Weather was a little shitty. And maybe two days is a little bit better than the three days. Yeah, but I, I got a feeling they're probably going to do three days again. Um and by the second day, Bert's going to say, Damien, drive me back to Philly. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Damien be like, yeah, Uber uh, will be $200. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, nah, if I go, Michelle will be coming with me with that one. Yeah. Now, nah, it's it. a good time, man. I, I I love the people there. I love I love the whole the whole hang and the environment. It's a lot of fun. It, re it really is. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, there's there's people I know that really just do go for the music and don't really care about hanging out and they stay they stand in their seat the whole entire time and they love it too so yeah. it, you know for, for me it's a little different you know well hopefully we'll see uh some of your friends come out from the hang to uh the masquerade festival that'll be here in uh july yeah yeah so that's like the next thing and a lot of people were buzzing about that um that i was talking to uh there you know it's like for, for this genre of music or whatever hard rock from that you know throwback hard rock whatever you want to call it uh there's like specific events throughout the year like there's the, the monster rock cruise and there's m3 and now there's this masquerade which is new and then there's like monsters on the mountain which is like a land it's like monster rock cruise but on land mm -hmm. <laughs> and then there might be like one other thing so and it's the same people that go to these things all the time it's the same faces you know yep that's cool um it's a huge it's a very big dedicated fan base it's it, it's pretty it's pretty incredible to see like i don't really notice that in other genres of music it's it's uh it's special you know so um yeah so wrapping up the m m m3 was pretty uh successful it was a good weekend and uh we're hoping to see some of you guys at the masquerade festival july 20 uh what's it start 28th is that the first day 28th, 29th, 30th, I think. Yeah, three days at the arena here in South Philadelphia. Yeah. The 2300 arena. And uh, yeah, we hope to see you guys there.